The Texans have been clear that there's going to be a competition between C.J. Stroud and Davis Mills for QB1 this offseason, but we know that Laramie Tunsil's QB1 is C.J. Stroud. We're going to talk about that today, and then keeping it in the vein of O-line, we're going to look into whether or not Titus Howard should be extended by the Texans, and then we'll close out with Jonathan Grenard. Is he being underestimated? And if he plays to his peak, how does he look alongside Will Anderson? This is Texan Stakes with James Roy. Let's get started. There are a couple positions on the roster whose opinion on who should play quarterback kind of matter at least a little bit. And left tackle is certainly one of those positions. Laramie Tunsil has come out on social media with his advocacy for CJ Stroud as his QB1. The Texans are still playing the there's going to be a competition for QB1 and I, the question is, is how long are they going to stick with that? I've said in the past, I'm on record as saying that it would be incredibly disappointing if the Texans took CJ Stroud number two overall just to sit in week one for Davis Mills. I actually have a clip from Mina Kimes at ESPN from three weeks ago that pretty much sums up how I feel about this whole experiment of there being a competition for QB1 this late in the offseason. Some logic, some merit to the idea of the Texans just naming CJ Stroud their starter right now? There's a lot of time between now and week one. Uh, so I, I do think that's an important caveat. But I also think there's no point in pretending that there's going to be a quarterback competition in Houston. Watching D'Amico Ryans, I was thinking about how, you know, he came from San Francisco where, of course, Trey Lance redshirted behind Jimmy Garoppolo. But that was a wildly different situation because the Niners were a playoff team and Jimmy Garoppolo was a successful quarterback for them whereas Davis Mills I think we have enough of a sample size of his play to know that he's not the future in Houston um, I also think with Stroud you know you want him to have that status as the leader unquestioned leader frankly in the locker room you want him to get those valuable reps I think back to Jacksonville when Urban Meyer inexplicably had a quarterback competition between Trevor Lawrence <laughs> and Gardner Minshew ultimately it was just kind of a waste of time so I don't really understand the point of uh, depriving him of that spot. It's a little harsh when the national media is comparing you to a really dark time in the Jaguars experience where they had Urban Meyer as a head coach but it's not off base it feels like if you think that C.J. Stroud is your QB1 and you have the inkling that he's going to start week one, it just seems like you're wasting reps with him, giving them to Davis Mills, instead of just letting C.J. Stroud develop you know, and get as many reps as possible before he steps into you know, starting in the highest level of football that there is in the entire world. It seems like you'd want him to have as many reps as possible to be ready for that. I would suspect that this might go into the preseason, I don't think that this is going to be a, okay, the preseason's over, and then we're waiting that whole two-week period to find out who D'Amico thinks should start. I have hope that D'Amico has enough sense in his brain to name C.J. Stroud the starter before the entire offseason has passed, um, leaving him to get all of the Team 1 reps right before the start of the regular season. It just doesn't really make much sense. There has been a lot of talks this offseason about the prospect of the Texans extending Titus Howard. And to my surprise, there are quite a few people that don't necessarily agree that that is a vital re-signing. I think that with the cap space the Texans have and with the vitality of the role that Titus Howard plays on the team, it's a no-brainer that he should be extended. I, I think that extending him before he can hit the free agent market, uh, to quote John Crumpler, saves us a little bit of money. There are other teams that might see Titus Howard as more of a left tackle, and left tackle money is a little bit more than right tackle money. And I think that as right tackle, he's proven better. So if he if he's good at right tackle, if we believe that he can be the right tackle moving forward, he, you know, him and Laramie Tunsil are, were one of the highest rated by PFF tackle duos in the league last year, one of the few bright spots on the team. So why would you want to risk breaking that up really early in your young franchise quarterback's career and put him at risk of not having the protection that he needs to thrive as a quarterback. John Crumpler actually put out a really good tweet that gives us the reference based off PFF rankings of where we should expect Titus Howard's salary to be. Um, he's, he's saying it's hard to get him at less than $17 million per year, which may seem steep, but as I've said, the vitality of protecting quarterback and the high rating and chemistry between Tunsil and Howard 
would lead me to believe that you, you've got to keep what you have. It's not like we're going to go in free agency or go be guaranteed in the draft to pick up another tackle that's just going to step in and instantly be the guy that Titus Howard has proven to be. He's progressed over all the years that he's played. And so I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't at least try to get that extension done. If, if he wants an unreasonable amount of money and they can't make it happen, that's one thing. But I have trouble believing the organization is not working towards extending Titus Howard, do it, not only to what he does at right tackle, but his versatility throughout the entire offensive line. I, I think that the price tag would have to be excessively above what his, his measured value is for it to not be a, a sensible decision with the Texans cap space to work out an extension with Titus Howard. A lot of people will tell you that the Texans need more defensive linemen, more edges specifically, and that the depth isn't there behind Will Anderson. And I think a lot of people are looking past what Jonathan Grenard has done in the past and how he fits as a starter across from Will Anderson if we can get the best out of him. Now, I'll be the first to admit that even in his best season, 2021, with eight sacks, he missed three games. And so there is the question of his durability, of his health. But if healthy... Jonathan Gennard is 100% the starter across from Will Anderson, and I think that that duo can terrorize quarterbacks. I think that it doesn't really make any sense at this. There's not much the Texans can do to replace that side of the line, so why, why is it that big of a deal if he does start? I mean, if he gives us the production that he's capable of giving us, he's 26 years old, he's been in the league for three years, so why would you not want to you know, risk the possibility of Jonathan Grenard showing out and becoming a, a force to be reckoned with across from Will Anderson. I, I mean, if, if he doesn't show out, we've, we just don't have someone on that side of the line. We'll have to go by committee and hope that Dylan Horton or some other defensive end edge rusher could possibly fill in the hole that's gonna be left by Grenard not staying healthy. I personally think that Jonathan Grenard is underestimated and I think given the chance, so long as he can stay healthy, a lot of people are going to eat their words when it comes to talking about what he is to the team and what he will do this upcoming season. This has been Texans Takes with James Roy. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. And if you want to find me on social media, it is at M1TexansFan. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads. You name it, I've got it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this isn't goodbye. It's see you later.